Yes, I know. Hi folks, John O'Leary from Horse Problems Australia and welcome to my Natural Horsemanship DVD, Disc 1 and Disc 2, which I have put together to make affordable for my clients because Uncle Pat's DVDs are a little bit on the expensive side for a lot of people. Having said that, I want to pay credit to Pat Pirelli. A lot of people don't. A lot of people try and make out that they have uh, invented the seven games or changed it to, uh, to make it sound as if they have done it. They haven't. Pat Pirelli should receive the complete credit. However, in this particular DVD set, we will be using horses that have never learned it, horses that are ignorant uh, and stay in the real world as my DVDs always are. So settle back, grab the popcorn, and uh, enjoy. Okay, we have here the thoroughbred uh, racehorse, and her name's Goldie, and she's racing next week. Um, we've picked a racehorse to, to show you the yo-yo game. And the thoroughbred off the track, which you'll meet a lot throughout your career because there's so many of them, um, are, as I say, right throughout this DVD, in your face and all over you. Okay, we're uh, still at the racing stable. We've gone and grabbed another one. Um, on the eternal search for the, uh, for the one that just won't move backwards for you. Uh, I don't know what his no name is, but uh, he's a nice bay. One thing about this horse is that if, when, he, when you uh, ask him to, to stop from walking over the top of you, you'll notice that he puts his head high in the sky. And over a week, you should then be able to send your horse back just simply with the fingers. Okay? Welcome back with Young Maverick. And now... Today, yesterday we talked about the yo-yo game. Today we're going to talk about uh, what Uncle Pat calls the porcupine game, um, which means applying pressure uh, to the horse and be able to move his front end or his back end, basically. Um, we won't get carried away with the technicalities uh, and the buzzwords, etc., to, to uh, confuse you or impress you. Notice that I had my elbow here. If you ever get one that goes to have a, a, a bite, good boy, it's just boof, get your head out, again zero to ten, get your head back there, don't come around here and, and even think about biting me. You do have to keep some discipline if required and the rules in place. And I, and I call this hide your bum from my face. And this is highly useful especially with young horses, so that if you ever walk near their, their back end, or a, a little kid does, that the, instead of them kicking and injuring someone, they will, if you walk past, past their back end, they will move over and they'll always think, get their backside out of, out of your space and out of your face. So, now, he's likely to go sooner rather than later because he's been over at the, uh, at the filming vehicle, having a think about it, and, and of course he does. Also a compliment to, um, comp compliment to his breed um, and his brains, this young horse. Now, what did you notice then? And here is one of your next terrific uh, pieces of information that you don't see on normal natural horsemanship DVDs. And could I take him over the jumps? I don't know, but why not try? going up the scale and the degree of difficulty, but good boy, good boy. He's a lovely boy. He's a good boy, whoa. Very smart, Maverick, eh? very smart. So, so what's he had? Four days at 15 minutes, so he's had an hour's training. Take out all my my yabba. The young foal's had an hour's training and he's basically learned the seven games of natural horsemanship and more. Um, 
and as I said at the beginning of this tape, it takes over three months to teach a human. So who's the smart ones around here? Us or the horse? Loop in the rope. You can see that resistance there in his head. That, that's the thing that I don't don't accept off young horses. Imagine when he gets 17 hands and there's that resistance. It will build as soon as he can see that he's stronger than you. That we've got to the stage where we could, if I like to spend another 15 minutes, I could go and sit, sit on the mud guard and uh, put him in from there. So I could lunge him around the property. Oh, lunge him. Good boy, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. <coughs> Providing you can trust your horse, and I do trust this, this little bloke, um, you, can, you can give him a pat on the backside. A lot of horses you wouldn't want to try that though. Just on. Whoa. Good girl. He's a lovely girl. Just an exuberant horse and um, a touch of ADD and a psychological side to this horse also, being that he may have been belted up a bit um, in his life uh, because if you, uh, if you get after him, he tends to want to throw the front, front leg. And, but basically he, uh, he's always creeping up on his owner, which is part of the problem. She has done a good job in, um, in training him uh, the seven games and as you can see this is, he stays out there and this is where this horse needs to be because he rears up off the ground when she leads him around the place um, on a couple of occasions at least leading him down to the arena here. Uh, the, uh, the young lady's asked me to walk him back to his paddock where he tends to play up on the way back down <clears throat> and uh, from a natural horsemanship point of view there, there, there have got to be trade-offs with all horses and as I said I picked this horse as an ADD type of a horse, highly intelligent horse, a playful sort of a horse and, um, and he's likely to uh, jump around the place um, until he's 15 years old, this sort of horse. Um, so really we mustn't get paralysis of the analysis and be trying to control his exuberance all of the time. Must we? We've just got to keep him out of our space so that he, he doesn't become a threat to us and he doesn't break the rules by going past us or evading us or trying to manipulate our feet. Um, because they happen to put their nose there and come in front of you. And that soon sorts them out to start the relationship that you don't leave, you don't leave in front of me and go past me, that you stay back there. He's a good boy, aren't you? He's a good boy. But this one, he still should be back there out of the road. I don't and this is where we don't want them jumping on top of us. And you can imagine trying to hold on to that one in that circumstances. And so I I would think that that would prove uh, prove the system and prove the point why natural horsemanship control of horses and getting down ropes especially with stallions that are, that are standing on their hind legs and rearing um, and it also proves the point that you can forget forget all about six foot lead ropes because that is just a waste of time and you would lose the horse every time um, and I want to talk to you now about some of the benefits and uh, of natural horsemanship and why we uh, spend so much talking about getting horses out on the end of lead ropes and why it's so much safer. Back and forth, back and forth and you'll go across up here a bit closer with your horses then stand around here and ask 
Good girl. Now, this is where where you must become um, soft with them and don't miss a chance. Any try um, must be accompanied with the friendly game. And it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. If she went backwards, we'll just ask her up again. Any try, one foot, two feet, putting feet on the back ramp um, is enough. Um, you, you may also, rather than just try to prove that you're the greatest trainer in the world, yo-yo, and here's another use for yo-yo, yo-yo the horse out, you couldn't do it if, if you're holding the horse by the beard. And number two, you certainly couldn't turn, turn this vehicle around um, either. But with, with the, the luxury of, of, um, of the long rope, Horse. She knows she's not uh, not escaping. She's not going to run away because she doesn't. She's not into fighting, and there's nothing that we can't do with them. It also makes them light on the head. Okay. Look on. Good girl. Good girl. So. As I was talking about training an event and putting boldness on a horse before you ride them. To drive the, um, the vehicle. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Now you'll see on my YouTube video of introducing the breaker to the water under the saddle. They have to put their head down to have a look. Good girl, yes, you're a good girl. Walk on. That's not gonna get you out of it, though. Walk on. Walk on. Walk on. Good girl, good girl. And they will often drink their way through the water. Good girl, you would do. Um, and you can put them through and over anything and in the end it becomes just a game to them and, and you've got a bold horse. So natural horsemanship has many uses and they're just a few of them. Good girl, okay, come on. Well, I hope you enjoyed that production and I hope you learnt at least one thing. Just remember that natural horsemanship is not a system of breaking in horses. It is a system of ground manners only. Whilst it is fantastic that you should put natural horsemanship on every horse that you handle, and that every horse that has it is a better broken in horse than those that don't have it, remember that it falls down in the areas of mouthing, farrier, and tying up horses. So stick to your conventional systems that I show on other DVDs, but do add on natural horsemanship to every horse that you ever own to make you a better ground person and your horses far more manageable. Catch you next time for my tying up DVD. Thank you. Let's go a little doggy.